previously on Aaron's Eccentric Garage. In part one of my RX-8 system swap, I shared the process of removing the old R12 system from my RX-7. Today we finish things up. Welcome to Aaron's Eccentric Garage. So after waiting a couple weeks for my custom lines to be made by JP3 Motorsports, and that you can see the sticker that they included, uh, the, the parts are finally here. So just a quick run through what actually comes in the kit. Prior to filming this video, I actually already unboxed and opened the kit to make it easier to display the contents of the kit itself. As part of the kit, you'll receive multiple lines for the discharge, liquid, and suction return line. The kit also includes all new hardware and electrical connections for the components. Wrapped up separately, the aluminum condenser brackets and hardware are included in this kit. In addition to the compressor adapter brackets and hardware, this kit also includes a new expansion valve designed to work with R134A and the corresponding evaporator in my car. So now that I have the kit from JP3 Motorsports, it's time to put it all together and get the car back together. Before assembling the brackets on the radiator itself, I decided to take a little time to polish the radiator and bring it back to life a little bit. With a little help from the JP3 Motorsports YouTube videos, I was easily able to install the brackets onto the radiator. All right, so interesting discovery. So I just unboxed my RX-8 condenser and it has these very interesting little tabs that are welded in to the actual condenser and these actually uh, don't belong so I'm gonna have to actually get my handy dandy uh, Dremel tool and cut them out because once this actually mounts about here they're gonna be in the way so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of modification um, this condenser I actually picked up on Rock Auto. Um, it's supposed to be OEM, but apparently, I don't know, maybe, maybe I missed a step, maybe I, I don't know. So flash forward a little bit and I was able to use my Dremel to cut through the welds and the aluminum just to pop off the brackets, not doing any damage to the condenser. So now it's time to actually mount the condenser to the brackets that are connected to the radiator. So now that I've attached the RX-8 condenser to the RX-7 radiator using the JP3 Motorsports kit, I also have the rest of the kit ready to go. So now the next step is to start removing things on top of the engine in order to get access to the RX-7 AC compressor. And this is gonna take a little bit of time.
Okay, so a few updates about the install of all the various components. So for one, the RX-8 bracket and everything goes in simple. Now when it comes to actually installing the radiator and everything back using the brackets and everything, with the installation kit, there were a couple of fitment issues that I ran into and I wonder if it's just because I'm running a Mishimoto aluminum radiator plus the OEM fans and then the JP3 Motorsports RX-8 condenser bracket kit, so it's a mouthful. But what I ended up having to do was I ended up having to slot the brackets that mount to the chassis for the radiator uh, just to make sure that they all fit because the holes didn't quite line up. It's about a quarter of an inch off. So the actual plumbing of the new lines coming off the condenser is pretty straightforward, at least so I thought. One line that leads from the compressor down the side of the car towards the front of the condenser and just plugs right on in, no big deal. The other line plugs into the other side of the condenser and goes straight to the firewall. Now there is a problem with this setup and it's only because of my particular situation. The type of intake that I have is a M2 carbon fiber box that feeds into my sequential twins. Now this normally wouldn't be an issue I think if you had uh, let's say like a Gretti or maybe a single turbo but uh, because of the style of box that I have uh, this is actually goes down into the side between the rail and also the fans blocking the space that would normally be plumbed for this line so I'm gonna have to do some trimming on my intake box in order to make this line on the, the high side line fit to go to the firewall after removing the plastic housing off the evaporator and cleaning off all the nasty gunk, I replaced the old expansion valve with the new one and reassembled the evaporator to go back into the car. Alright, so now I have the RX-8 compressor installed with the brackets along with some of the lines to the front of the car for the RX-8 condenser as well. So the next step is going to be running the rest of the lines to the evaporator box lines that are at the firewall. And once I do all that, then I should be able to start testing the system for leaks by pulling a vacuum. After pulling a vacuum for over an hour and not seeing any leaks on the gauges, I gave the system an initial charge using a refrigerant containing a special dye that could be seen using an ultraviolet light to ensure that there were no additional leaks. Since the system was fully charged and there were no additional leaks, it was time to see just how cold this system could really get. Since our low temperature of the day was only going to be 93 degrees Fahrenheit, I decided to hit the road as early as possible. To my surprise, while driving at freeway speed, I was actually seeing temperatures coming out of the vents in the low 30s. Okay, so after a couple of weekends of working on the Mazda RX-7 and getting that RX-8 AC conversion kit installed from JP3 Motorsports, I wanted to share my final thoughts. So. This kit is sold as being plug and play, which I would say is 90% true. And the other 10% I would say is mostly due to my car having some custom modifications anyway. So everything is pretty much plug and play as they say. Really easy thanks to the videos on YouTube that show you how to take care of certain things. That other 10% mostly was due to fitment issues with the brackets and trying to get it in the actual spot on my car. Now if you have a Dremel tool or basic shop tools, this is an easy thing to do. Just you might need to trim here or there just to get things to fit just right. But once it's in, it looks great, it fits well, and also it works very, very well. So if you're looking to either add R134 system into your car, let's say your Mazda RX-7 doesn't have any air at all, I would highly suggest using this kit from JP3 Motorsports. And also they're extremely helpful. During this whole process, I was sending messages, asking questions, and they were very quick to respond, very friendly. So give them a shout out. But also thank you for checking out this video and until next time, keep driving.